I like to get in the book of Revelation. I've had people tell me in times past, preacher, that book scares me. Well, it shouldn't if you're a saved child of God. Right? Yeah. Okay. It should not bother you in the least. If I'm rightly dividing the word of truth, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, that's when the church is taken out. You say, when that's going to be? I don't know. But I think Jesus is getting each and closer and closer to the edge of that seat. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the Father to say, go get my children. Mm -hmm. You say, how can you know that? Well, if you look at Revelation chapter 3, the church at Laodicea, that is the age we're living in right now. I'm thankful that does not mean that every body of believers or every group that gathers on Sunday is a part of the Laodicean church. I'm thankful we can still be a Philadelphian church in the Laodicean church age. But we are in that church age now. We're in a whole lot of, if you even want to call them churches. And, and, and here's what bothers me. Well, you know, the word church just might turn people off. Yet today, and I don't keep up much with stuff like that. I'll get to it, maybe. I think today is what they refer to as Pentecost Sunday. Fifty days after Passover. Pentecost is the day the church was born. Mm. Pentecost was the day that the disciples were gathered in that upper room and they heard the sound as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the place where they were at. And they went out with a boldness that they had never had before. And a man by the name of Simon Peter who had 43 days before that had literally, literally denied Christ and cursed His name preached with a boldness that they'd never seen him have before. And 3,000 souls got saved. Mm -hmm. What's your point, preacher? That's the day the church was born. Amen. Yes, this should be a Christian center. And yes, this should be a fellowship But if you're afraid to say I'm part of the church, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, you know, that word church will turn a lot of people off. Well, I'm thankful I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church in Revelation chapter 4 is carried out of here. Mm -hmm. The church does not appear back on this earth until chapter 19. Mm -hmm. I'm not here during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. I've had people tell me, well, preacher, you know, I think we're going to be here in part of it. Or I think we're going to be here in the first half of it. You want to stay, stay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's not, the Bible still tells me, is it First Thessalonians chapter 4 or 5? I think it's 5. That God has not appointed us to wrath. Right. The tribulation period is a time of God's judgment and wrath to fall on this earth. Thank God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, I'm not under condemnation now. Mm -hmm. I may face his chastisement, but I am not condemned. Right. Thank God, I'm going to be out of here. So it shouldn't scare you. If it does scare you, you get right to God. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank God in chapter 19, when we come back, we're coming up, and I'm still coming behind him. He's in the lead. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the first to face the Antichrist and his armies. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the first, and I'm not going to have to do a thing but watch. Because the Bible says out of his mouth is going to come that two-edged sword, and they're all going to drop like flies. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be flippant. But don't let this book scare you. Mm -mm. You know, the Bible tells us, in the book of Micah, that he cast all of our sins into the depths of the sea. And here in the first part of Revelation chapter 21, after the white throne judgment, John says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Thank God my sins are going to be the point that nobody can ever dig them up again. 
Now some of y'all may have never had that problem. But people like to throw your past stuff in your face. Mm -hmm. People like to say, I remember when. Yeah. I remember what you did. I remember where you went. I'm thankful one of these days that's never going to happen again. Amen. Begins to describe that new city that John saw coming out of heaven. But let me get down and get to this because it's going to be, it's 20 to 12 already. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 21, if you're able to stand in respect to the Word of God, I'm going to start reading verse number 23. Revelation chapter 21, verse number 23, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Verse 25, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And in chapter 22 and verse 5, and there shall be no night there. And they need no candle. Neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Verse 24. Back in chapter 21. The nations of them which are saved. Shall walk in the light of it. Verse 25. There shall be no night there. Verse 5 chapter 22. There shall be no night there. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to you again, we thank you, we praise you for the day that you give us, for the way that you watched over us and took care of us. Lord, I'm thankful this morning for every blessing and mercy you supplied, because I know, God, that every good thing we have is from you. You have been good to me. You blessed me. You took care of me. You've kept me safe. You've given me health and strength. Every need being supplied. God, I want to thank you for allowing me to be back in your house this morning. Thank you for each one of these that's come out. I'm thankful, Lord, that we've got this time we can come and spend together to worship together in spirit and truth. God, I thank you most of all for salvation. I thank you for Jesus. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, that he was willing to go to that cross and die in my place. I'm thankful he was willing to do for me what I could not do for myself. And God, I beg you to forgive me where I failed you. Forgive me where I've let you down. Forgive me where I've come short. Now, Father, I ask you this morning to help me. I'm thankful for the service already. I'm thankful for Sunday school. I'm thankful for the time in the prayer room. Thankful for the songs that were sung. But, God, I need your help now to try to preach because I can't do it by myself. Lord, I need you to come down and overshadow this place with your spirit. I need you, Father, to give me that fresh touch and to pour out that fresh anointing upon me. I ask you, God, this morning, to touch my mouth. I ask you to put your words there. And God, do me like you did the prophet Isaiah. Take that coal. Clarify my lips. So that God will not be able to say anything except what you have said. Father, I pray this morning that I not lead anybody astray or tell anybody anything wrong, but that I'd only tell them what you have done. Go with us. Through the rest of this service, Father, most of all, if there be one under the sound of my voice that does not know Jesus, I beg you, God, today to convict their soul and let them realize that need. Have your way, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I am glad that one of these days I'm going to a place where there is no night. My wife gets aggravated at me sometimes. I told her it's not going to be but about it's a little less than three weeks now to the first day of summer. And she said, okay. And I said, mm-mm. And I do this every year. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't know what I'm getting ready to say. Mm -hmm. I said the days start getting shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the first day of winter. <clears throat> the days start getting longer. Amen. I like sunshine. I don't care how cold it gets. I like sunshine. I don't like to leave home in the dark and get home in the dark. I like to leave in the daylight, get back in the daylight, have plenty of light. I don't like the dark. Now, I can sit in my living room with no problem. But I don't like it outside dark. There's too much goes on in the dark. 
There's too much that happens that's ungodly and wicked in the dark. Mm -hmm. That's when the majority of the bad things take place. Yeah. That's when the majority of the break-ins, the majority of the killings, the majority of the shootings take place. <laughs> majority of the stealing, the theft, that's when most people choose if they're going to do something they ain't supposed to do, that's when they're going to do it. But the Bible tells us here that there's going to come a time that there'll not be any more dark. He says, and the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Yeah. I'm thankful today that Jesus Christ is going to light that city. Yeah. You say, how's he going to do that? The glory that he had. You remember Moses in Exodus 33 when he said, God, show me your glory. God said, you can't live. Mm -hmm. You can't see it and live. When the disciples were up on the Mount of Transfiguration, they said, Jesus was transfigured before them and his face shone with a glow and, and his raiment became as white as snow and and, and, and the apostles, they just fell out. They couldn't stand it. When Moses came down off of that mountain, he had a glow about his face. And the people said, you've got to put a veil on because we just can't even stand to look at that. And what he was doing was reflecting God. You said, what's going to light it? The glory of God is going to light it. And thank God you and I are going to have new bodies. We'll have glorified bodies that will be able to stand in the very presence of God without us falling out. I'll be able to stand in His presence. I'll see His glory. For the first, I've seen His blessings. Yeah. I've seen His handiwork. Mm -hmm. I've seen reflections of His glory. But to be able to look full force in the glory of God, and there'll be no need of the sun or the moon. And here's what I like. Those that are saved are going to walk in it. Mm -hmm. Thank God I'm going to be in it. I'll never know what darkness is like again. I'll never know what it's like to be pitch black midnight. And I'm telling you, when you get in the middle of the night sometimes and there's a new moon, I mean not even a sliver of a little moon, you can't see. I mean it gets dark. I know you can see the stars, but the stars don't give near as much light. I've seen full moons when you could read a paper outside at the middle of the night. But there will never be darkness like that again. Because he tells us, they which are saved shall walk in the light of it. In verse 25, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all the day, for there shall be no night there. Mm -hmm. And in verse 5 in chapter 22, There shall be no night there, they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, they shall reign forever and ever. Let me just make, try to make this as quick as I can this morning. The Lord God shall give them light. There'll be no night there. Can I just tell you this morning that if you're a saved child of God, you are already walking in that light. Mm -hmm. That if you're a saved child of God, the Bible says over in 1 John chapter 1 that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If you're saved this morning, you're already walking in that light. But you listen to me. If you don't know Jesus as Savior, if you're not saved this morning, if you've never been born again, if you've never been transformed by that, by that act of grace and mercy that only Jesus can do, you're walking in the dark this morning and you've got no idea where you're headed. Right. Right. I've lived in the same house for over 35 years. And there's still times if I get up in the middle of the night I could still stub my toe. Everything's still sitting in the same place. I blame it on being, being clumsy. But the truth of the matter is sometimes it's dark and you can't always tell what's what and where's where. If you're here this morning, if you're watching this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're stumbling around this morning, you don't realize where you're at and you don't realize where you're headed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, now wait a minute, but no, I'm just going to tell you plainly. If you realize where you is at, you realize how close we were to the coming of the Lord, you realize that none of us getting any younger, that we all getting older. If you realize this morning that your destination was a place called hell, 
You would look for the light just as quick as you could. Mm-hmm. I've had men tell me that they got down in some of them coal mines and they would say they'd just let you, let you flip that light. Bible says in the book of Exodus that when God took the, the light away that there was a darkness there that night that you could feel. It was like it was closing in on you. I was in a cave, me and my wife was, a couple of years ago up outside of Salem and Roanoke, Dixie Cabbage. We, we was up there and we went through it and the guy said, don't nobody move. I'm getting ready to flip the light. And I've never in my life been in darkness like that. Yeah. Never been in darkness like that. Physically. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, you are in darkness like that and you don't know I could step here and fall. I could step here and run into something. I could step here and it'd be the last step I ever took. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful today. You can, because of the love and the mercy and the grace of Christ, you don't have to be walking in darkness anymore and you don't have to end up in a place of darkness. You say, wait a minute, preacher. You talk about going to hell. You talk about fire. Fire's bright. Well, let me just say this, and we've looked at it before. Mm-hmm. You fellows that's done welded, you know, you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it one more time. The hotter the flame, the darker the blue. Am I right or wrong? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. The Bible says they'll be cast into outer darkness where it's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. There'll be no light to light the way because God's presence is not going to be there. And when you take away the light of God, when you take away His mercy, when you take away His love, when you take away His grace, there is nothing left but darkness. In Genesis chapter 1, there was darkness covering the whole face of the earth till God Himself showed up and said, let there be not the Spirit. And how did that light? Because the Spirit of God moved upon the water. Let there be light. Well, you preacher... You crazy. That's when the sun and the moon was created. No, you read on. They weren't created until day what? Four. Well, what brought the light? The Spirit of God brought the light. And that's exactly what you need in your life today. You've never been saved by the grace of God. You're already walking in the dark. You're already in the night. You don't even understand what day is. I don't care if you're outside at noonday and there ain't a cloud in the sky. You still don't understand what light is. But people are getting harder and harder to reach. Yeah. People are getting harder and harder to convince. People are getting to the point they don't want to hear it anymore. Yep. People have, oh, they ain't even know God. How can you even? I ain't trying to be ugly. But those people are going to come to a sad realization of truth one of these days. Amen. Are they going to come face to face with the one that hung on that cross? Mm-hmm. They'll find out God just as real as you and I are this morning. Mm-hmm. He told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he said, this is the condemnation that light has come into this world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And every man that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come of he to the light, lest their sins should be reproved. Mm-hmm. You say, what do you mean? They don't want to be told they're wrong. Right. They don't want, nobody wants to be rebuked. Nobody wants to be scolded. We've been listening to Sunday school lessons on, on the, 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 the medical terminology where life is defined, where children's defined, Fetus, embryo, the whole nine yards, and yet you tell somebody that the very act of abortion is the murder of an innocent living being, mm-hmm. and they tell you you're crazy. Yeah. There is walking in as dark a life as you can imagine, don't want to come to the light because they don't want to realize that their sins are truly seen. Amen. People want to live the way they want to live. They're going to enjoy it just as they did back. You remember, I can't remember what chapter it is, but back in the book of Exodus, when they convinced Aaron to make that golden calf, Mm -hmm. it said that they ate and drank and rose up to play. By the time Moses come down off of that mountain, God said, you better get down there. Get down there, I'm going to consume them all. By the time he got down there, 
that is all drunk and dancing around naked. Let's just have a good time. It don't matter. Doesn't matter what I do. If it feels good, do it. And I got the right to live my life any way I want to. That's the way people live. Yeah. That's the way people believe. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you now. The day's going to come that there's a hole in a righteous God going to say, what you did was wrong. What you did was wrong. Mm -hmm. What you did was wrong. What you did was wrong. And people will look at preachers today and they'll say, you don't have a right to judge me. That's right. I don't. But if God's Word's already judged it, Amen. I can call it sin whatever anybody else in the world wants to try to say. Right. They're going to a place where there is nothing but night. I'm thankful that because of salvation, I'm going to a place where there is no night. The glory of the Lord will never depart. Thank God you're going to a place that's got Ichabod over the door because there is no glory of God. Mm -hmm. Now you hear me. Paul said in 1 first, first Corinthians, if our gospel be hid, it's because of the people that had their minds darkened and blinded by the God of this world. People are believing the devil more than they believe the Word of God. You say, well, wait a minute. No, I'm going to tell you why. The devil's got more followers than God's got. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. There's more people out of church this morning than there is in. Yep. There's more people living and contrarying the Word of God than there is people living for the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about people that's sick. I ain't talking about people that has to work. I'm talking about people that ain't give God a thought. Yep. No concern. None. And they let the devil blind them. And you know the old saying, this ain't scripture, but it, the old saying says, there's none so blind as those that will not see. Right. Some people refuse to open their eyes and see the truth. Yeah. Some people refuse to realize the truth of God's Word, and that's just the way it's going to be. They have their understanding, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, they have their understanding darkened and they're alienated from God because of the blindness of their heart. He talks about the nation of Israel who's got the veil not over Moses' face, but got it over their heart. Mm -hmm. And that's the way people are today. They built that wall up between them and God. And the darkness is there. And they don't realize they're alienated from God. And they'll still tell you, well, you know, I'm going through life and I've never done anything bad enough to go to hell. How can God send me to hell? God ain't going to send you to hell. You already headed there. Yeah. And to go to hell, just keep living and doing like you are and leave God out. Mm -hmm. How many times do we have to hear people say, well, preacher, I'm good enough. No, you're not. There is none good. There is none righteous. No, not one. Amen. Without Jesus Christ, I deserve to be in hell already. Amen. And the Bible says I'm already condemned if I don't have Him. Already. You're sitting here this morning, or if you're watching online and you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, you're just like a person on death <coughs> row down at Raleigh. All you're doing is waiting for the needle to go in. Yeah. And the day is going to come when you're going to leave this world. And judgment will be carried out. Sentence will be carried out. And there will be no appeal. They wait for a call from the governor. They wait for a call from the parole board. They wait for a call from the Supreme Court. They might even be waiting for a call from the president. But it ain't going to happen. Right. We'll leave this world if we leave lost without Christ. Our feet will slide off into hell just like the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy. And there'll be nothing or no way anything can it catch us and keep it from happening. Don't go, go down. Those people are going to hell every day. And they're going to and not even thinking about it. <coughs> not thinking about it. Jesus said. In John chapter 8, he said, I am the light of the world. I am 
the light of the world. Without Christ, by biblical definition, you've got to be walking in the dark. With Christ, thank God, you're walking in the light of His love, of His grace, and His mercy. He said, I'm the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It is that light that's going to give you that life. It's that darkness that's going to bring death. I tore up a little bed, a little, little raised bed there to house and had put it on the back of a wheelbar and one of them storms in the wind blew the wheelbar over and I told William I said I'll get it just I'll get it when I get time I don't know how long it laid out there it didn't take long you're going to say preacher any any, any can, can know what happened yeah you know what happened to the grass that was under them boards that why did it die it's in the dark Folks, I'm going to tell you something. You and I this morning are not mushrooms. We ain't going to grow in the dark. Right. Without light, we'll die. Right. Amen. If you don't have that light of God within you, that light of life that only comes through Jesus Christ, you've got nothing. I'm going to wind up here in just a second. <coughs> now I know Paul was talking to Christians in Romans chapter 12 in one of those verses. When he said it's high time we awake mm -hmm. from sleep because our salvation is nearer than it was before. But he also says down in chapter 13 the <coughs> night is far spent. Mm -hmm. You've been walking in the dark long enough. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to realize you need Jesus? How long does it take to realize that, that without Him you're going to die and go to hell. How long does it take to realize you are a lost individual? How long does it take to realize it's time for me to get out of the dark and get back or get into the light that only God can give? You know, I, I'm thankful that there are people that, you know, it, it, children can truly get saved if they know the truth. And they comprehend the truth. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, remember thy Creator in the days of thy youth when that heart is young and tender. You know what happens the older we get? We get tough. We get calloused. We get harder to reach. People feel like, men and women both feel like I've made it this long. I can make it a while longer. Folks, not by self or tomorrow. But who knows what a day will bring forth. Today could be your last one. Listen to me. Today could be your last one. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. So what do you mean the day is at hand? It ain't going to be long till the sun rises. I'm thankful that on that first resurrection morning the S-O-N rose out of that tomb yeah. but it ain't going to be long till the S-O-N is going to rise off of that throne mm -hmm. yeah. and he's coming back after his church mm -hmm. the day is at hand <coughs> now is the accepted time today is a day of salvation right. let us therefore cast off the works of darkness get rid of them get on tired I ain't following you no more. I'm tired of having that ball and chain dragging around. I'm tired of having that monkey, that sin crawling on my back like a monkey I'm carrying around. It's time to cast off those works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Yeah. Why? If you're here this morning, and it's hard for me to believe that either somebody here or somebody that's watching it's hard for me to believe that there ain't somebody on the sound of my voice this morning that's lost. Because I don't believe God would have given me this message. Why have you put it off? Why have you not accepted Christ? Why have you not been born again? Why have you not confessed your sins? Why have you not confessed through your mouth and believed in your heart God's raising from the dead? Why have you continued to walk in darkness? Time's running out. And Jesus is soon coming back. Yep. 
And you say, preacher, when he comes back, then I get saved. You ain't promised that you're going to live when he comes back, number one. That's right. Number two, you hear me, what I'm about to say. I know the book of the Revelation teaches that there are going to be a number of people saved in the tribulation that no man can number. Mm -hmm. Well, let's rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible still says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that there's going to be a strong delusion. Yeah. And people are going to believe a lie mm -hmm. because they believed not the truth. Right. They rejected Christ and did not believe Him to be the Messiah. And so they're going to believe a lie when the Antichrist steps out and has the power that God's going to allow him to have. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says at that point you'll be forever damned. Yeah. You say, I don't like that kind of talk. Take it up with Father. He wrote it. That means there's no hope. You're done. That's just as those, is it chapter 11, 12, 13, 12 or 13? I think it's 13 in the book of Revelation. Those who take that mark of the beast in their forehead or in their right hand, they've sealed their fate once they take it. Yep. And if you don't believe it's getting close, mm -hmm. they say they'll not be able to buy or sell. Now let me go back and pick up some things I have preached in, in the past six months. <coughs> I told you a while back we were going to a cashless society. Yeah. You know what that's going to mean? That means they'll track every purchase you've made. Yeah. Yeah. Tooth fairies aren't going to be able to leave a five dollar bill under the pill anymore. Yeah. You're not going to be able to slip your grandchildren at 10 or 20 and say, you, you go to the store and get what you want. Everything's going to be cashless. And people say, that can't happen. Sure it can. The chips are already being invented. The chips are already being placed in people's hands. You know, they got these credit cards now where you don't have to slide them. You don't have to insert them. All you got to do is tap them. Yep. The chips are already being inserted where all they have to do is walk up to those things where the, where the credit card can go and go. And yep. it's done. Yep. Let me just say this. I'm not going to say that chip is the mark of the beast, but if you don't believe that's a forerunner, you've got your head yeah. in the sand. Amen. What's your part, preacher? We're that close. Yeah. That close. And time is running out. And people have no idea what's coming. So, the days ahead, <coughs> it's time to cast aside those works of darkness. Step out into the day. Beg Jesus. If God's dealing with you, now's the time. Don't put him off. Don't cast him away. Don't reject him. And if God has quit dealing with you, it's time God people to God's people to pray. It's time for you to beg God, please, one more time. Give me that opportunity. You say, God will give it to me. Really? What chapter in Hebrews? I think it's four. It might be five. Talks about Esau. You remember Esau rejected the birthright. Yeah. And that birthright was more than getting his daddy's camels and tents and mm -hmm. flocks and herds. Mm -hmm. That birthright also was the covenant that had passed down from Abraham and Isaac. <coughs> and the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that Esau sought, mm -hmm. sought with bitter tears the place for repentance. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> but there was not found a place. You say, what does that mean? That means he crossed God's line and God turned his back and said, that's it. You say, God will do that. God will never turn his back on you until you've turned your back on him. I'm convinced of that. Mm -hmm. 
God will never reject you until you've rejected Him. You say, well, how many times? I can't give you that answer. I'm just telling you now. When Herod Agrippa looked at, Saul, at Paul and said, Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost wasn't good enough. So what are we supposed to do? Cast off those works of darkness. Step out into the light of Jesus Christ. Thank God I'm glad I am so thankful this morning I'm going to a place where there is no night. I'm going to a place. You, you know why? We sing that song once in a while. In the land where we'll never grow old. Yeah. I don't care how long we're there. All for eternity. Only one day. Yeah. You don't age. Jam on one day. No clocks. Time officially stands still. Second hand does not creep. <clears throat> Time ceases in eternity. If you go to hell, it's just one long endless night because that same time ceases. I have woke up nights, things on my mind. You look at the clock and you see the minutes tick away. And you think, Lord, is, is morning never going to get here? Yes. Is morning never going to get here? Well, I can tell you now, in hell, morning will never get there. Mm. It'll never get there. One long, endless night. You say, well, preacher, what have you got that I got that I don't have? <laughs> God's made me a promise. Mm -hmm. He says, ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We're not of the night and not of darkness. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Thank God I may not be much. <coughs> but I've got the light of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm headed. And I'm headed to the place where there'll be no night. Where the light of the glory of God's love, I ain't even going to need the sun of the moon. Now where are you headed this morning? There'll be no night. There'll be no need of the sun. There'll be no S-U-N because I'll have the S-O-E. Are you walking in darkness? If God's dealing with you, ain't it time to take that step to the light? Ain't it time to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of Christ? Ain't it time to say, I'm done living without Jesus. I'm done knowing where I'm headed when I die. God's dealing with you this morning. I'm begging you. Don't put it off. You ain't promised nothing. An eternal night could come right here in the next minute. You understand that? David made the statement over in 1 Samuel when Saul was going after him. David made the statement, there's only a step between me and death. Mm -hmm. Used to sing a song when I was a boy growing up. I ain't heard it in a long time. The next hand you shake could be the hand of the Savior. Mm -hmm. The next step you take could be on the streets of pure stone. Yep. Let me turn that around. The next hand it shakes could be your hand shaking because of the torments in hell. Right. And the next step you take could be into the blistering water. You say, preacher, you truly believe in a place called hell just as much as I believe in a place called heaven. Right. Do you truly believe there's a devil just as sure as I believe there's a Savior? Amen. Do you believe there's a place where there's eternal night? Just how, like I believe there's a place of eternal day. I'm thankful tonight. I ain't perfect. I know this morning that I fail it and I make mistakes and I let it down. But I am thankful that I am walking in that light and the place I'm headed is nothing but light.
Mm-hmm. So this morning, if you ain't headed there, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And whosoever, I don't care who you are, don't care what you've done, don't work it, care where you come from, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't put it on. Get promised tomorrow. Father, as we come to you one more time, we thank you for the day. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for supplying our every need. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be back in your house again this morning. And I thank you, Lord, for each one of these that's come out. I thank you that we've had an opportunity to look at a portion of the Scripture. And Father, I pray this morning I said what you'd had me to say. And I pray that I said it in the right way. Yeah. And Father, I pray you take the message and you use it. And you use it for your honor and for your glory. God, I can't save anybody. All I can do is point them to Jesus. So, Father, this ain't about me. So, Father, if they walk that aisle and come to this altar, they're not coming to me, they're coming to you. I can't save them. I can't take them home. I can't change them. But, God, I'm thankful this morning. (coughs) Thankful this morning that you're able to save to the uttermost all those that come to you by Christ Jesus. So, Father, if there be anybody here, that does not know Jesus as Savior. If there's anybody here this morning that's never been born into the family of God, I beg you, God, to deal with them. Convict their soul. Let them see that need. Let them realize that without Jesus, they have no hope. God, give them one more chance. Whoever it might be, if there's somebody watching or somebody listening by phone, God, let them realize if they just, they could fall down before a coffee table or before the cow, just ask Jesus to come in, save their soul, confess their sins before you. God, I beg you. I beg you. Can I give them one more chance? One more time. One more opportunity. And for what you do, we'll thank you, we'll praise you. We ask Jesus' name. Amen.